Good morning, everyone. My name is Joe Meradian. I'm a sales executive here at Kativ Technologies. I'm excited to be here today. There are many of you in the audience that I recognize, and there are some new faces that I see as well. I'm glad that you all took the time to join us today. Out of the hundreds of people that signed up, it looks like most of you were able to make it. Really appreciate you uh, making the session live with me and investing your time in Kativ Technologies. So today is our 83rd episode of the Autodesk Virtual Academy. AVA for short. This is an exclusive program hosted by Kativ in partnership with Autodesk. It's hosted every week, it's live, and we broadcast it around the world for customers in the design and manufacturing industry. So right now is a really busy time in the Autodesk and Kativ world. All the new versions are coming out this month if they haven't been released already. And just last week, we gave a first look into Inventor 2018 ended up being one of our most popular sessions to date. Uh, Lauren Welch is the program manager for Inventor 2018. He took us through a journey of showing us the new features and new products in Inventor. Today's session is going to be similar to that. Uh, We're working with Irvin Hayes, who is the leading product developer in America for the Vault product line. He's going to spend some time showing us a lot of the new features that are available in Vault. And uh, really, he wants to get some feedback from everybody on this call as he has in the past. One thing that we're all excited about is a lot of the new features you're going to see are directly relatable to customer input over the last couple of years. I know many of you are really eager to take a look at this technology. I'm going to hand it off to Irvin in just a minute here. Uh, what I really wanted to do, though, is uh, kind of give you an outline of today's course. So uh, he's going to present to us. And what I'm going to do after this is kind of explain a few ways that you guys can take advantage of these new features immediately, leveraging Kativ and our Kativ service team uh, to really help you through that process. Just a couple housekeeping things. I want to make sure everybody on this call and webcast is able to uh, input any questions or comments they have. You can input those into the question box down on the bottom right of your screen. Uh, we're going to have a dedicated Q&A session at the end that's going to be hosted by Irvin Hayes, and uh, we're going to take those one at a time. Uh, so feel free to type those in as we go, and we'll answer those at the end. All right, I'm now going to pass this presentation off to Irvin Hayes. Irvin is going to walk us through some of the new features in Vault 2018. Irvin, take it from here. Great. Thank you very much, Joe, and thank you, Kativ, for uh, hosting this event. Um, again, good afternoon and good morning to some of you, uh, and thank you for joining us today to talk about what's new in Autodesk Vault for 2018. Um, as Joe mentioned as well, just as I go along, go ahead and type in your questions in the uh, questions portion of the meeting. And at the end, we will go through a Q&A session and I will answer uh, your questions for you at that time. So let's jump right into it. And we'll probably want to have a separate conversation with the 30% who's not using Vault and uh, tell you why you should be at some other point in time as well. But today we're going to have this, this current agenda. We're going to introduce Vault 2018 and we're going to talk about three important sections of, of 2018. Uh, and what we've done and, and the enhancements that we've done in this particular release. The enhancements revolve around uh, experiencing or the design experience, uh, the engineering efficiency, and then enabling administrative task delegations. So a quick summary of Vault 2018. Again, we talked about the enhancing the design experience. We've done some enhancements inside of Vault or inside of Inventor as its integration with Vault. We've done a couple other things inside of, of the Vault client as well, and, and we'll cover those. Engineering efficiency, we've, in, we've enabled the capability of PDF publishing for downstream consumers, so we will talk about that in depth as well. And again, the task delegations, we've introduced a few new administrative roles, and we will jump into the details of those. So first off, enhancing the design experience and so that I'm not overwhelming you with PowerPoint presentations, but there are a few areas here that we, we want to talk about. We're going to talk about the Vault um, browser inside of Inventor, some Vault browse, uh, properties for searching, and then the go to folder option inside of the Inventor browser. We're going to talk about AutoCAD and what we've changed for the AutoCAD user and then experiences of, of uh, modifying existing DWG files, but not being able to check them out and not being harassed about checking them out when the file is locked, as well as the numbering scheme 
display for the description of each numbering scheme when you're using generated numbering schemes and selecting during the save process. So let me just jump out of this presentation and I'm, I'm going to jump right into Inventor and we're going to discuss some of the things that we've done here. What I'm showing you here is it's just a really uh, a simple assembly here. It's actually not simple, but it is pretty big. And most of you are used to having the Vault browser sit right inside of the model browser. And as a big enhancement and enhancement request that has been asked for by our users, we've taken the Vault browser now and we've allowed you to detach it from the Inventor model browser. So now this has the docking capabilities just like the model browser does. I can float it around. I can dock it to one specific side of Inventor uh, and then I can keep on using it as it sits. What it also gives you is the capability of I can select things on the Vault browser or in the Vault browser. And as you see, as I select these things, uh, the, if they're exposed over here in the model browser, they will highlight in both on both sides, the Vault browser as well as the uh, Inventor or model browser. Along with some enhancements that Inventor has done with the model browser when it comes to its searching capabilities, we've taken that particular capability and included it into the Vault model browser. So now I have a lot of files sitting in, in this particular model. They're in various different states. I've exposed the state property within the Vault browser as well. If you expose more properties, you're able to search on those and then filter your Vault browser based on those particular properties. Right now, if I wanted to see all of the files that are in the released state, I can just do a quick search and it will expand and show me all the files that are in the release state. I can clear this out if I want to go in reverse and just go into the work in progress state. I can also type that in and you will see that actually it starts to, well, this one's very long. I do have a lot of files checked out, but you can see in essence that the searching capability will allow you to filter what's being shown currently in the vault browser uh, and then, you know, being able to quickly find those particular features. I can clear this out and everything goes back to a normal here. I can just collapse the fields and I'm back to a regular model browser or vault browser in this particular instance. Another enhancement we did in this based off of user feedback is that what if I selected a particular file and or part, I wanted to do, see some more information on this particular assembly, for instance, inside of Vault Explorer. With a right click option selecting go to vault folder, what you'll see is that it will launch a Vault client and it's going to take me right to this assembly. I no longer have to search for this assembly or do a separate search in the client for this particular assembly. It'll take me right there, opening up another instance of Vault at this point um, because we don't want to interrupt your current instance of Vault client that you have open, but it will open up this particular one and select the file and now I can see that particular file that I've selected inside of Inventor right there inside of the Vault client without having to hunt for it or you know, hunt, hunt it down. So those are some of the things that we've done inside of the client here. Uh, again, you know, we've shown you the, the um, uh, go to folder option. I've shown you the, the searching capabilities as well. Um, clear those out. And it still has, again, the interactions between the two browsers in there live. So I'm going to switch back to the presentation here. We will talk about the AutoCAD um, features in a second, but just showing you again what we've talked about, uh, again, the detaching, the interaction, and the enhanced search capability. Uh, we can execute commands on the search results. So obviously once we filter out what you look, you're looking for, you can still do all the vault functions, right click functions that you have um, been able to do in the past. I've shown you to go to a vault folder. Yes, it does launch a new instance of the Vault client each time that you choose it. As I was demonstrating here, it's an insert into CAD feature. This is from inside of the Vault client. You select an assembly or file, what have you, for Inventor only, um, and you can right click on it and select insert into CAD. What this does is this will drop that particular file or that assembly part, what have you, into the current session of Inventor that is open. Again, providing you the capabilities of not having to get the file down, go back to Inventor, do a place, and then place that file from Vault, um, from the, the open dialog or the place dialog at that point. 
you're already found it inside of Vault. You have your Inventor session open. You can right-click, insert into CAD. Once you jump right into Inventor, you'll see that file, then you can start placing it where you want to, writing a currently open uh, Inventor design. Another one, uh, Inventor has added some more AnyCAD support. Uh, so along with that AnyCAD support, Vault has also made some enhancements to support that particular workflow and that necessity of using different um, uh, CAD products uh, files. And we show this by uh, in, in an example here of using Inventor 2018 and 2017 together. You might be referencing uh, a 2018 assembly but in, uh, using an Inventor 2017, but you, Vault will also know this information as you go in and check in and check out. Bottom information is updated. The, the uh, where you use and use this tab is, is updated. We fully support this in 2018, so you can have a mixture of both Inventor uh, 2018 and 2017 assemblies. And I'll jump back in a minute to show you some other enhancements there that, that might help that along as you uh, continue designing in, in different versions. Large assembly performance, I will jump back in right now into Inventor to show you this here. Uh, what we've done inside of the Vault Client, when you choose an open command, you will notice uh, a couple of changes. We wanted to make some enhancements to it that made you familiar with what you were already doing inside of Inventor when you select open. So if I go into Inventor and I select an assembly, for instance, I do have a few more options that I didn't have before. This option of opening it in full and express mode, and then you have the additional options here uh, within that same dialog, which you should be familiar with, is that when you choose open inside of Inventor, you also have the exact same options. So we've now put that into the open from vault uh, dialog option as well. When it comes to drawings, if you're selecting a drawing, you have additional options of opening it in full or opening it in the defer mode. So that allows you to open it straight from Vault and, and have the same options again that you have from inside of Inventor when you're just choosing an open from your local workspace. Okay, let's jump back in here. Usability performance uh, improvements that we've done. So I don't have, uh, I won't show you a version or what we've done in AutoCAD, but I'll just speak to it. And this also has been one of the ideas uh, and requests coming from our idea station that we've implemented based on your feedback, is that when you're inside of AutoCAD and for instance, a file is locked uh, for whatever reason for you particularly as the user, what we used to do is when you're starting to test the drawing, you might wanna throw in something else into the AutoCAD drawing just to mess around with it, but you don't really want to check it out. You don't re want to revision or version the file. Vault used to prompt you and ask you, do you want to check it out? And because the file was locked, you were unable to check that out. It was found to be an annoyance by you, the user. Um, we understood that annoyance. We looked at your feedback, and now what AutoCAD will do is that it will allow you to modify the file as much as you want, but it'll never prompt you to check it out because it is already in a locked state and you couldn't check it out anyway. You have to free or open up the lock. That could be by um, changing the life cycle state and what have you, uh, or getting permissions to edit that file. But AutoCAD will no longer prompt you to check that file out because it is locked and you can't check it out anyway in its current condition. In the Inventor uh, open from Vault, as well as inside of the Vault client, we've now added an application versions uh, column. This is a, is a key column that I do want to show you the effects of. And I think this is going to help out a lot of people, especially when you're migrating from one version of Vault uh, to 2018 or just to a, or 2018 or higher in that case. So if you right click on here inside of a new version of Vault, um, if you're migrating from an existing version, you're going to have to add this property. But default versions are out of the box. We have this application version property. Close that. Application version now, what it does, and I'll expand this a little bit more so you can see it, is it'll tell me what version of the file uh, the, app, the file was created in, what version of Inventor, in this case, the, app, the uh, files were made in. If I wanted to look at a history and find out what version this particular file started with, 
or how many versions it's gone through, I can add that to the history column or into the history tab. Let's move this up a little bit. We'll just drop it in here. Show my versions. And I can see, well, it's been modified 2018, 2018. Its original file version when it was checked in was 2017. Also, if you have a, a list of files or a particular library of files in itself, you can find out, well, do I need to migrate any of these files from a previous version? As you can see, I have a 2017 version of this part, another 2017 version of this part. I can easily track those down and then migrate them as necessary to bring them up to a new version of 2018 if I needed to, or I can leave them where they're at. And this happens, you know, this, Again, it just makes it easier for you to identify what version your files are currently at. Uh, in here, we've added also the option to turn on and off the checkout dialog. Previous releases, we actually had disabled the checkout dialog. That, that caused some um, disturbing workflows for our users. We, ha we had a lot of feedback saying they need to turn it back on. And the reason why is that you'd only get the option to check out one file at a time. If you had a very large assembly and you wanted to check out multiple parts or multiple sub-assemblies to that particular uh, top level, you actually had to individually select each of the files you wanted and check them out. We've re-enabled the checkout dialog. Uh, it gives you the ability to check out all of the children or subsequently just uh, check out only a few of them as necessary. The numbering scheme, um, I believe I have another slide on this one. Let me go back. The numbering scheme is another key uh, feature that has been requested before when you're selecting a numbering scheme. All you had from the drop down was just the number that you can select, in this case, whatever the field value would be. Um, now we've added the ability to see the description of that particular field uh, as you're going through or as the users are going through and selecting uh, your numbering scheme layout. This was another high demand as well. With that, I'm going to move over to engineering efficiency. This particular uh, feature of PDF uh, creation is was the number one requested idea on our idea station. We've now implemented it inside of Vault so that now on a change of state from any state to a release state, a PDF can now be generated of your drawings. And this could be your inventor IDW or a DWG file. Uh, this gives you ability to have downstream consumers of the PDF, uh, outside consumers of a PDF file, because um, most people use PDFs uh, more than this, uh, depending on the workflow and, and also who the consumers are. We have done some copy design enhancements as well, uh, and let's jump into those. So, reusing engineering knowledge for um, again for more efficiency. This here is a copy design feature. What, enhancement that we've done, creating uh, variations from the previous release design. So uh, when we first released the new copy design, we did not have the capability of going to a particular version and starting the copy design from that version. A lot of feedback came, came back saying that people were creating their own def uh, action rules and had to put, leave that iLogic information in. So what we've done is we've changed that default action rule, uh, and now the default action rule will leave the iLogic information uh, during the copy process. UDP is copied from the original. So when you do a, a copy design and your, your particular file had user-defined properties that were on the file, and they weren't necessarily a map property, they were vault properties. When you do the copy design now, the values of those particular UDPs and the property itself would get copied from the original to your copied file. And then there were some issues around the linked drawings. Uh, we've improved those again based on a lot of user feedback. So you are aware of what drawings you're being that are being copied and that are not copied. Uh, and you'd also be aware that we're not editing drawings that we should not be. Um, so those things were changed in the copy design. PDS. So let's jump into this. And actually, I'd rather demonstrate this to you instead of going through the PowerPoint. So let's show some PDF information. So I have a few drawings here, um, and I have an IDW. I got a couple of PDFs for for an example. But let's talk about where the information is, or how you, as an administrator, would have to go in and set up PDF your PDF options. First off, in the Vault settings underneath administration, 
your PDF options will be shown in the Files tab. You have two different drop downs that you will select from uh, to the AutoCAD PDFs or Inventor to the Inventor PDFs. This information or these options are all information or options that you would actually have in AutoCAD today uh, it, with a few differences of adding as an attachment. So what this will do is when the PDF is generated, it will automatically attach the PDF to its parent file. Upload to a source location. Um, we're going to upload the PDF or when the PDF is generated, it will get uh, placed in the same folder or location as its parent file. You can upload to a selective vault path. Uh, so if you want a specific folder that only contains all of your PDFs, you can select a particular path inside a vault where all those PDFs will be uh, created. And even if they are created outside of the location of the parent file, it still will be attached to the parent file. You can sync the revision of the source. Um, so if your revision of your uh, drawing is at revision D. When that PDF gets generated, it will sync and be at the same revision level as the source drawing. Uh, use page settings within the, the user DWG file. That is checked by default and, and uh, at this point in time, it will always be on. Include the model space, include layouts, initialize layouts, and then include the font handling. So those are all things that you can do inside of AutoCAD when you generate a 2D PDF from an AutoCAD DWG. As far as Inventor is concerned, these again are options that are coming um, that are similar to the options inside of uh, Inventor when you generate a PDF. Again, you have the first uh, four options that are the same, attaching uh, the PDF, putting the file in the source location, uh, you can select the particular location that you want to put it, the PD, all the PDFs in, syncing with the source. Now you can mess around with the vector resolution. We start off at, off at 400 DPI, but you can see you can select from any of the DPIs uh, in here, so you can change that resolution that you need. Plot object light line weights, um, all sheets, and then all colors is black. So those are your operations or options for all PDFs generated with inside uh, a vault on your 2D drawings. If you're migrating from a, an existing vault, some of these things, uh, as far as what I'm about to show you now inside of the behaviors, are not there. Um, but a new vault, it will be there. So migrating, you'll have to do some manual work to get the PDFs enabled. Um, and, and then uh, if not, if you're new to vault and, and you're using Vault Pro, uh, you will see these particular um, things I'm about to show you right now. So let's start off with a category. With Vault 2018, we've introduced a design representation category. These, this is going to be the default category that those new PDFs are going to be attached to. As you can see, it also has a life cycle, which we'll jump into and show you that. Um, the revision, we start off with the alphanumeric uh, revision, and we do add a few properties as well on the particular category for design representation. There is a default rule that will come into play when you have a design representation. These PDFs are generated or is known as, are classified as design representations inside a vault. I think one of the things that everyone needs to keep in mind is that the PDF generation does not take the place of our visualization or our DWIF uh, features inside a vault today. The DWIFs are hidden. Um, they have a special classification of their own. Uh, this is not to replace that particular classification at this time, but the classification generated for these PDFs, only the PDFs that are generated by the uh, inside of Vault are set as a classification of design representation. We move up to the life cycles, and what you'll see here in the life cycles is we do have a design representation life cycle. Uh, and then those are particularly, will have its own security. It's a very simple life cycle in itself. Uh, you will have to modify it for your job processor. Uh, if I, I probably didn't state it before, the generation of the PDFs is done by the job processor. So you will have to enable that. Uh, you will have to also add that to a life cycle state. So I'm going to show you this life cycle state here that I've modified for, um, for the generation of my PDFs. If you look at a transition, when I go from work in progress to the release state, there's a few other actions that are now created or available to me. 
So you have two more down here at the bottom. You should already be familiar with the top two, which is synchronizing the properties using the job server. The second one is synchronizing the properties and updating the view using the job server. The new, two new ones here are synchronize properties and update PDF using job server. Notice that the, the update view, which is the DWIF, is not added to this one. But the last one, there is an option as synchronize properties, update view, meaning create the DWIF file, and create the PDF using the job processor. If you select this in any other state um, that is not going, not transitioning to a release state, or that is a state where the state is known as the release state, the PDF will not be generated. It is only generated during the transition into a state that is the release state. All right. Now, <clears throat> what you've noticed, you, you will notice here, is here's, a, here's an example of PDF generated off this IDW. I'll show you this in the Users tab. Uh, so you can see the attachment, and you'll see an attachment actually to a different PDF. And the reason why is because I wanted to show two different things here. When we had came out with this particular feature and we put it into our beta program, we were calling or naming the PDF with the same name as the, its parent file along with its extension and then a .pdf. The feedback coming from our beta forum, is, beta forum said, hey, we really want to have a name without the extension of the original file. So it was late in the cycle, uh, late in our release, right before we were releasing, uh, late in our development cycle, but our developers came up with a method to now you can actually modify the name so that the name excludes the extension. You also have now the ability to add a post and a pre uh, extension uh, file name for the PDF when it's generated. If you're not familiar with my blog um, under the hood, uh, you might want to take a look at that particular blog. I did create a, a blog post that tells you all about the PDF generation. And at the very bottom of it, it tells you how to reconfigure the client so that you can customize the name of your PDF as it is generated. When a gener the PDF is generated, we know about that particular PDF based on the name. We will always uh, keep that PDF in mind. Uh, and in any new version or revision of the particular file, we will generate a new revision of that PDF and put it right on there and then link it. So. With that, again, I was showing you the linkage here, but I wanted to show you here's the, the second uh, release or version of that particular file uh, linked to the dot one without the extension or dash one without the extension of the drawing. All right, let me jump back here. We've talked about this here. Uh, we've talked about your, your uh, extra settings. Uh, that's what this is talking about in the design representation category and inheriting properties from the CAD file. Here, what it also allows you to do, for instance, is that these PDFs are now open to users who are thin client consumers uh, so that they can actually find these PDFs, generate, uh, open up these PDFs, print them off, do what they need to do straight from the thin client as well. Batch plot, to round off the capabilities of the PDF, uh, previously when you dropped the PDF into Vault and it had multiple pages, you didn't have a lot of options as far as batch plot size, the orientation and color and the scale. These 2D PDFs now are all have this capability within our batch plot command. So we've enhanced it also to include the ability to place a stamp uh, on the PDF as it is being printed, as well as a watermark. So those enhancements to PDFs, once we generated them, uh, we again move that on to try and round out the feature uh, with a batch plot when you print those off. Each of the pages within the PDF now are treated uh, separately. So if you have different or multiple sizes within there, you can choose your size for each of the pages and print them off on your plotter. Along with this feature, um, we didn't know it when we were designing it, but we found it uh, during that design process. When you have image files such as TIFFs files, when you print those off, you can now add the um, timestamp, the watermark, as well as also selecting the plot size orientation as necessary. So if you have large scale TIFF files, you can do that as well in the, in the batch plot manager. All right, moving on to enabling the administrative task delegation. Um, this particular feature was also added uh, in request from a, a lot of our larger customers. 
Uh, the current administrative role is usually given only to uh, certain individuals in a company because of the rights and, and the permissions that that particular role has. However, there are certain tasks that people wanted to delegate from the administrator to other users, but did not want to give them full administrative rights. So what we did was we took some of the roles uh, or some of the permissions, broke them out into different roles, and now you can actually delegate this your administrative task to users for those particular features or areas of the product but not give them full administrative privileges so we're going to talk about these three roles here real quick first off the project administrator role so what this particular user can do is now they can actually or they can remove the uh, uh, reservation on a file meaning a user has checked out a file Maybe they're not in for, for that day, but someone else wants to uh, modify the file, or maybe the user no longer works at your company, but they have files checked out. This particular project administrator now can go in and they can remove the reservation, meaning they can do an undo checkout, even though they're, they are not the person who originally checked out the file. This administrator also has the ability to do unconditional delete. The unconditional delete is usually uh, or previously was only being able to accomplish by the full administrator but now a project administrator can do or perform this particular role the security administrator so again with some other delegations objects within the vault have their own ACL or a object uh, or a security permission set on those particular uh, objects this particular administrator now has the ability to just go in and modify the security on files as necessary. Again, you don't have to go back to your full administrator to perform these actions. This project or security administrator can now perform these actions for you. I would advise that you use this particular role uh, sparingly uh, or with the knowledge that this particular user has full access to all the files within the vault. He can see what's called a cloak file, meaning if he originally does not have permissions to view a file, because he has this role, he can view that file, although its current security says that he cannot. He can change the permissions of those files. But that's all this user can do is modify, start modifying security on objects. As you can see from the, the dialog, uh, the small set of permissions that are added to this particular role. The configuration administrator. So uh, again, uh, usually, the administrator, the full administrator would go in and have the ability to uh, control the files and the visualization properties. What I showed is now the PDF options during print, manage the behaviors, the properties, the life cycles, uh, category rules, things like that, item and change order settings, and the custom object settings. So basically, anything that's in the tools administration vault settings dialog, this particular administrator has the ability to go in there and start to configure those as necessary for the uh, for that particular vault. Um, so again, now not, not needing the full administrator administrative rights uh, to perform this particular action. So again, to iterate here, the full administrator has ability to do things inside of the ADMS console. Need, none of these three roles have that ability. Anything on the ADMS console, only the full administrator can do. So they don't have that full overarching high power rights or permissions inside of Vault. We've added uh, custom jobs. If you're familiar with the lifecycle event editor that we've had in previous um, uh, versions of the product, we've now taken that out and we've added the custom job type straight into your transition. So if you've done some customization where a when you're transitioning from one state to the next and you're doing uh, some other types of jobs, you can actually go right into that transition and add those custom job types uh, right into the dialog without needing the lifecycle event editor. With that, I know it actually seems like I went kind of quick, um, but, it looks, but it looks like we, we are, we're at the end here. A couple of things I do want to highlight before I start jumping into questions. Um, if you are not a participant in our beta forum, I, I highly recommend that you uh, participate in the beta form. Again, when we talked about the PDF uh, feature right before we released 2018, we had users in the beta form who told us about the naming of the PDF, and we quickly figured out a way to go in and 
uh, modify that to that request. The Vault Ideas page is very important. Um, if you have an idea, uh, something that improves your workflow or something that's just something that you want in the product, take a look at our Vault Ideas page. It's very important that you kudo some of the features that or wishes or ideas that other users have placed there. Put your own up there as well. You will see statuses on all of the ideas. Um, look at the status guidelines so that you understand what these, each of the statuses mean uh, and see how many features uh, we have implemented based on your ideas. And again, we'll start having a lot of discussions even in the ideas, just uh, comments on the ideas themselves. Uh, and then we'll probably take some of those ideas when we work on implementing them to our beta form and having full discussions on those. Now, before, again, jumping into Q&A also, um, I believe you have, and, and Joey, please correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, on the 40% discount and that ends next week uh, when you purchase Vault, uh, work group or professional, uh, minimum number of five seats. So if you haven't purchased it already, um, you might want to jump on that as, as soon as possible. Yeah, that's correct, Irvin. Thank you for bringing that up. So, um, you know, I see a lot of questions have come in. I'm going to let you get into the Q&A session. I just wanted to mention something real quick. You know, it looks like looking at some of the comments that have come in and uh, just previously working with uh, some of my customers and also some of the people that have attended here on this webcast, uh, many of you are eager to get to Vault 2018. You know, these new features are great. The presentation was great here, Irvin. I really appreciate that. Um, I, I just want to make sure you guys know that uh, if you need a helping hand in getting to 2018, uh, Katif plays a, a significant role in doing that. Uh, we have a lot of customers that have opted for the Katif Vault Care supports. Uh, anyone that is on this webcast that has Katif Vault Care you will be automatically contacted by our Lifeline support team, and they will schedule a upgrade for you automatically. So, uh, you know, look out for that in the next uh, week or two. Um, you know, we'll reach out to you and get that scheduled. If you're not a Kativ Vault Care customer, we still have a pretty convenient and efficient way to get you to 2018. You know, most databases, uh, you know, say five to 10 users, uh, one database, and, and, you know, let's say, you know, three to five gigabytes uh, size database. We can migrate that for you. The, the cost for us to do it is about $1,800 to get you from your current version up to 2018. Um, so that's definitely something that we're able to help with. If you have any more questions, you can contact me or your sales rep at Kativ, and we'll be happy to, you know, provide that to you, uh, you know, upon your request. Uh, one thing I did want to mention also before we go to the Q&A is that uh, this was the second installment of our What's New series for 2018. As I mentioned earlier, we did one on Inventor Professional earlier. That is on our Kativ AVA YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, and uh, this session will be uh, you know, recorded on there as well. Next week, Marcus O'Brien, who is the AutoCAD product manager, is going to be joining us in a session just like this, uh, specific for AutoCAD. So many of you, I see some questions here too, asking about uh, you know if, if Vault uh, you know works with AutoCAD as well. Um, he will be able to answer that as well as Irvin next week. So go ahead and, and join us next week if that's something you're interested in. We'll have a link sent out to everybody that's attended today. Um, other than that, you know I really appreciate everybody joining us today. I'm going to give this back to Irvin so he can take us through the Q and A's and uh, anything. I see there's a lot of questions that have come through. Feel free to ask any more as we go about. Thank you for your time and uh, go ahead with the Q&A session, Irvin. All right, great. Thank you, Joe. All right, so we'll start uh, with Radu. Um, he's asked two questions. Does the GoTo folder work inside of AutoCAD uh, 2? And does Vault Pro 2018 work with AutoCAD and Inventor 2016? So the first one, the GoTo folder option is, is uh, or I'm assuming you're actually asking about the GoTo Vault folder option uh, that I, I demonstrated inside of Inventor. That is an inventor only um, feature currently. Um, I will find out, I, I can find out later if we're gonna put that in AutoCAD, but as of right now, it is inventor only. Does Vault Pro 2018 work with AutoCAD and in Inventor 2016? Yes, it does. Um, it, with each of our releases, we always support two, release back, two releases back of the CAD product. So Vault 2018, uh, you can use Inventor in AutoCAD 2016 and 2017. Uh, you will have to use the Vault 
clients from those particular releases, but they will allow you to connect to a 2018 server. Um, so those are there. Mario asks, can you insert into CAD when selecting a part or assembly within an item, either in the item master preview or open item? Uh, that is actually a good question. I do not believe that we put, them in, put those options inside of the item. I think those are only inside the file browser. Uh, let's see, Radu asks, can you check in an assembly from express mode? Uh, yes, you can. You can check in an assembly in express mode. We will carry over all the information and we know uh, Inventor as well as the, the Vault add-in will know all the necessary information about that assembly and its and parts and uh, sub-assemblies or its references that it knows about. Uh, let's see, moving on to Mario. Is there a search function available in copy design when you when replacing parts or assemblies within the copy design? Uh, yes, inside of the copy design, there is a search capability. Uh, I think it's probably not as easy to see or find, but there is searching capabilities within inside uh, the copy design dialogue. Uh, Christine asks, by using a specific vault path for PDFs, can we restrict user permissions to only view PDFs so they can uh, not see any of the other files? We wish to restrict production from seeing anything but the PDFs. So the answer to that is yes. So when you actually are <clears throat> When you're selecting a specific path for those PDFs to go in, on the folder, I would advise you to set the security on the folder so that those users have access to that particular folder. They need the read permission. The PDFs are created in a release state only, so in a release state only, people can view them. They can't edit them, uh, but they can open them. Uh, and therefore, if the PDFs are only in that particular folder, that's all the users, those users will have access to. Uh, they won't have access to the parent file um, because they're in another folder location that you've secured off. Uh, Chris Hodges asked, migration and custom styles, there, there used to be a tool called style management. Was it reportedly now gone? Is there any tool available for mass batch harvesting uh, of styles and batch styles or batch migration? Um, I believe that that's more of an inventor question. Um, I am not aware of, a of, a, of this tool, so I'm sorry I cannot answer that question. What is the difference between state-based and object-based security? Uh, that's a question from Mario. So I'll, I'll do a brief comment on this one uh, because I could probably use another entire hour on, on security itself. So first off, object-based security just starts at the lowest level. It doesn't matter what state the, the file is in. As a matter of fact, for users who don't use life cycles, um, you can put a object-based security um, on that particular object, or let's just say file as an example. State-based security is security that is applied to the object or the file during each of those transitions between from one state to the next. In 2017, we combine these two so that they work together. So you have a, a starting object level security, which is a lower level security, and then uh, then you apply the state-based security on top of that. Um, if you're interested in more about that particular uh, subject, Mario, or anyone else, I would recommend that you go up to our Autodesk University um, webpage, that's au.autodesk.com, uh, look in the history of the classes and actually do a search on my name. I did a full, I think it was a 90 minute class on this at AU uh, last year. And I go into great detail into using state-based and object-based security. Um, and then there's also some handouts that you can download um, for more detailed information. Um, so I'd recommend going and taking a look at that class. Uh, moving on to Jeffrey. Um, which of these new features are not available in Vault Basic? Oh, that's a very good question, Jeffrey. Um, none of these features are available in Vault Basic. All these features are available between workgroup and professional. Bob Thompson, is Vault ECO workflow customizable and to what extent? Uh, at this time, Bob, we have not extended the ECO workflow capabilities. 
Um, we do have that on our roadmap for the future. Um, and so I would say stay tuned and keep your eye out for our, in our beta forum when we start discussing those. But as of right now, uh, it is pretty much set uh, the way you see it inside the product today. Bob also asked, what updates do you have for reporting templates and uh, are they customizable? Uh, how easy or hard to customize reporting templates? So um, <clears throat> reporting templates are customizable. We have not changed that over the years. Um, I, we, we have that again on our roadmap too, probably to change uh, the way reports are being done, um, whether they be from templates or not. If you are familiar with the, I think it's the R, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it's RPC format, reporting format. I, I'm probably getting those initials incorrect. Um, but if you're familiar with that particular reporting format, you can use open or third-party tools to, to uh, create report templates. Um, Microsoft has its Visual Studio, I think Express Edition of 2012 is a version that still has that reporting format in it. Uh, you can use those tools to edit the templates. Um, does 2018 support Microsoft Office? Yes, 20, uh, we still continue to support Microsoft Office. Uh, the 2018 release uh, added support for, actually it's still, it, it, that support was in 2017 as well, so Office 2016 and Office 2013 versions. Please do not get uh, confused between when you say Office 365 though, Office 365 is really a subscription uh, or a sales term. It's not actually the version. The version of the Office program you can always see in the help about for the for like Word or something like that. It always references back to um, Office 2016 or 2013. So we do support those products. Vincent asks, in which version can you edit a closed change order? Uh, in no version can you edit a closed change order. Uh, a clo you, ha you have to reopen that change order. Uh, let's see, which version discussed today, which feature discussed today is available in Vault Basic? I, I, I did I already answer that. Let me skip that. Uh, Alex, where under uses and where used, is there is there functionality to search for part from the tree. Um, we do not have that going through the tab. Um, that search capabilities inside of the client is, is still from the folder level, not from the file in particular that you're looking at. You can, uh, no, I'm gonna just leave it at that for right now. Uh, is there a need to migrate files now with the backwards capabilities? Uh, Neil asked this question. Uh, and this is also a very good question because I think a lot of people get confused on this. For the longest, actually, Inventor introduced uh, a, um, I'll call it a technology called Zim, Zero Impact Migration. Uh, and that's gone back quite a few releases, even in Inventor. You do not have to migrate your, your Inventor, Inventor files. You can, for instance, launch uh, Inventor 2018 Let's say you start an assembly and the parts and or sub-assemblies of that assembly, that top level assembly uses could be in 2018 and you don't have to migrate those. Uh, Inventor will allow you to use those in those assemblies, keep them in their same version uh, and you can check them in the vault. And you can see now with the application uh, version column uh, that the assembly is using 2017 parts. Uh, so unless you are making a change to those older versioned uh, parts and assembly, you don't need to migrate them. You will, uh, I will say the, the one downside to that is uh, Inventor will migrate them in memory, although it won't save or change, you know, save the migrated versions of those. So you will get a, a performance hit depending on the size of your subparts or parts or files that are in the old versions uh, upon open. So uh, I would say, my recommendation at this point would be migrate them as needed when you start to modify them, but don't just go through a batch modification or a migration of all of them, uh, all of your files inside of the vault. Uh, I'll move on to Alex. When searching parts in vault, the back button 
takes me to an upward, uh, takes me to a level upward instead of going to the last object I was viewing. Uh, has this been changed? Uh, no, this most likely has not been changed, uh, Alex. So I would say um, no, that it, it, it probably does the same thing. Uh, this is one of those things you could probably go ahead and put that on our idea station and we can take a look at that. Uh, is copy design structure available? Copy folder structure, I'm sorry. Uh, Mario, no, we do, we do not have currently a, a, an ability to copy a folder structure uh, so you, for a new path, um, but we do have that one on our roadmap as well. Um, it's probably also on an idea, idea station. Will Vault Data Standards 2018 and Thunderdome be available for download when Vault Pro 2018 is released? So Vault Pro 2018 is already released. Um, there will not be a new release of Thunderdome. Uh, Vault Data Standards uh, for 2018, uh, I believe it should be releasing shortly uh, if it hasn't already. Um, but you will get a new updated data standards, but uh, we will not be releasing Thunderdome again. Uh, the last one, does the zero, does the same zero impact migration apply to AutoCAD as it does to Inventor? Uh, I do not believe that AutoCAD has the ability for zero migration. Um, so I, I, I couldn't give you a complete answer on that, but from what I know as of right now, it does not. And with that, that is the last question, unless anyone has another one. Give you another second to jump in and add one. Yeah, thanks for that, Irvin. I, I haven't seen any more come in. If, if you do have another one, feel free to type it in. If there's anything that uh, we missed or you want to learn more about, uh, you know, reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to your Autodesk, or your uh, Kativ account manager if you have one. Uh, otherwise, you can also just send, uh, send us a note through the chat and we'll get back to you with more information. Well, I appreciate your time, everybody. I appreciate Irvin for uh, this great presentation. Uh, we will follow up with some of you that have reached out and requested it. Other than that, thank you for joining the Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy. Have a great Friday and great Easter weekend, and uh, we hope to see you back next time. Thank you.